Good evening, Raider fans, and welcome to the Raider Nation podcast. And I am your host, Raider Greg, with another fantabulous show here from the Raider Nation podcast, that is. Yes, this is the Jets preview game, and what a game it'll be. Probably a footnote in the NFL history because both teams are struggling, actually, in the basement of their perspective divisions. However, it's not for us because we get to see Tui play. Uh, that's part of the show. Before I start the show, I want to remind all you fans to check out the Frapper website. I have a link that's on my webpage, www.radionationpodcast.com. Check it out. It's kind of the right side, middle of the, the site, and you'll see it. It's in a little white box. It says Frapper on it. Click on it. Put a pin where your address is. It'll give a a little address, and you can put your picture in there. You can say something. You can make a statement and show the rest of the Raider Nation where you live. So this is good, man. I've got people in England so far. I've got a lot of people on there, and they're coming on great. So put your name in there, throw in a picture, and be loud and proud just like the Raider Nation should be. Uh, Frapper is a pretty cool program. And uh, I like seeing it because I like to see all the fans out there. It's cool. Okay. Shouts out to Robbie Markey. Uh, Robbie had a comment on my webpage. He, wanted, he wants to trade Tuyas Sopo for Matt Hasselback um, of the Seattle Seahawks. Well, I'm sure they won't make that trade now because they're looking at contending for the Super Bowl. I don't think they're going to get there. They could. You know, they could be NFC. You know, it's weird the. The uh, NFC team from the north there used to be an AFC team. We used to be our rivals too, but uh, they made the flop, and now there they are in the same division with the 40 Winers. And uh, so he had an interesting comment because he lives up there in that area, and he saw Tui Asisopo play in Washington, was very impressed with his play. And like I've told you before, Tui is an awesome player, uh, yet to be seen in the NFL, so we'll see what happens here. Not this Sunday. I don't believe it'll be a real contest. Next Sunday when he's at home, I think we'll be able to see him. I like to see him playing in the Coliseum and uh, see what he does against the Browns. So thank you, Robbie, for your comment. I appreciate it. And anytime you want to comment, you go right ahead, my brother. Gene Lovett, thank you for your comment as well. Very encouraging, and I appreciate it very much. Okay, this is a shout-out to Charger Chris. Now, I know that sounds kind of unusual, but it's really just shouting out to him because he's a punk. And the reason I call him a punk is he called me out to go on Charger Ray's website or Charger Ray's podcast uh, and do a podcast with him. And I have heard neither hide nor hair because Charger Chris is Charger Ray's brother. And I've been calling out Charger Ray from the very get-go. Even though we lost both games, I still called him out. Now, the Raider cast and Charger Ray are very close. They've done a lot of buddy-buddy. It's very touchy-feely podcasting going on over there. But that's just not my way. I told them, matter of fact, I had a little comment to Raider up because they're so friendly. I I just can't take it to our opposition. Um, But nonetheless... Charger Chris emailed me with some, you know, pretty awesome smack talk, actually, you know, chopping down the Raiders, chopping down the Raider Nation podcast. And so I fired back on him. He said, well, if you're put up or shut up, come on the show. I can't wait to get a piece of you on the show. I want the fans to hear from you. I said, right on, brother. I sent an email back to him. And I said, well, you guys think you're going somewhere. Chargers ain't going no place. They got the Doncos, they got KC, and they got the Colts to deal with. And they're going to be right back at home watching TV during the end of the playoffs. So you can just forget it. And, you know, and then I also said something, too, which, you know, what are you going to say? Until you have a ring, Charger Chris, bling, bling, then don't be talking. Because until you do, you ain't got no room, Patna. Because from now until you do, you will always be a footnote in the NFL. So right back at you, Charger Chris. A little bit to you. Thank you. Please email me if you hear this podcast. I can't wait to be on your show. And I might bring a couple friends of mine. Sean of the Raider Take and uh, Nil Billy Boy might have to come along too. 
because we'll just have to take you on down. That's it. Okay. Okay, tonight's show, other than that little tangent I went off on, is, of course, the pregame for the Jets, which is not a whole lot because there's not a lot to say. But there are some other things on the show. The Collins factor. What is he saying now that he's been benched? What they say, ESPN, CBS, etc. And then what I say. So that's kind of what the show is going to be all about. <laughs> it should cover quite a bit. And so let's get into this pregame thing because it's pretty short and sweet. Uh, the one thing I did notice, I did go to Podcast Alley and checked out to see if the Jets, Jets had a podcast. And they had two which are unactive at this point. One had one podcast, the other had four. Uh, latest one was uh, 12-3 of this year. Uh, and he didn't sound in his last podcast like he was going to be making any more podcasts. And that's a shame because evidently the Jets don't hang with their team. And that, that that's hard for me to say because I'm a Raider fan. And we'd be hanging in the thick or the thin of it. Win, lose, or tie, Raiders till I die. And that's kind of the credo or Greedo, or whatever you want to say, the saying of the Raiders. And all the Raiders fans have been that way since I can remember. Uh, it's interesting to see the fan reactions from other teams. Now, the Jets, I thought, had a good fan base. Uh, evidently not strong enough because they're dropping out of the podcast business. Nobody to represent the Jets, and I'm really surprised. But that's the way things go. So I won't be able to banter around anybody from the Jets podcast because there ain't nobody home. So that's about that. Now, I did go to the Jets site, and I looked on their site, and they're having a tough season, man. They're 2-10. and 10. Can you imagine? I mean, it's bad enough being 4, but 2-10? and 10? Oof, that's ugly. That's San Francisco. Oh, sorry about that, Niners. Not really. Anyways, I just, it was hard for me not to see this, and I mean, you're going to hear it in this podcast because, you know, I really respect Herm Edwards. I love him as a coach. I really like this guy. He's got a great sense about him. He's a strong man. He is a, a a man of character, and he's a man that tells you exactly what he's thinking. And I clicked on his uh, latest newscast or you know whatever he has to go up there in front of these these sports writers and take abuse, and especially in New York, man. Let me tell you right now, they break it on down, and they don't twist any words. You know what? He took it big time. He put it right back in their face. And I love this about him. That's why I hope we get him as a coach. I'd love to see him, her Edwards, come over to the Raiders. It'd be great to see. And we could have Mealy Mouth, I'm not sure what I'm talking about, Norv, out of here. Um, not that, you know, coaching changes and playing changes. I've heard them all. Heard all the statistics. Uh, still the winningest team, team in football. These last three seasons, however, have proved to be detrimental to the Raiders, uh, but I have no doubts that we will be back and not in too much time. Okay, back to the Jets. They're 2-10, and ten, like I was saying. Herb Edwards, to the point, but he's on the hot seat in New York City, and that's what the reporters keep saying. They got some tough questions. How will you win? What can you do? Uh, he has mega injuries on his team. He lost his first, second stream quarterbacks. He's got to deal with Vinny Testaverde. Uh, this new kid, Brooks Bollinger, he's a rookie. And he wasn't that high in the draft anyway. And he's playing. Uh, he's a good runner. But, however, their offensive line is depleted. They might even throw in Testaverde. Vinny Testaverde, yes, all you can remember Vinny from several seasons ago is still playing Yes, he's still playing football. I think he's 41. That's pretty old to be throwing the ball. But he's doing it, and he might be playing in this game if this rookie can't do it. Uh, Herm is doing his best job because all his offensive line is beat up, bruised, out. The defense is hanging. You know, it it's, It reminds me of our team. Uh, their offense is a lot worse than our team, but it reminds me of their, our team because... Their defense is decent. I mean, they, they can keep teams from scoring a, a while. And then the second, third, I mean, the third quarter and the fourth quarter, they're so tired because they're out there so much, they fade, die out and fade away. So that kind of sounds familiar, I know, to most Raider fans. And that's what's happening to the Jets this season, worse than the Raiders. The thing that hurts them the most is their turnovers. 
They're 29th in the NFL with 14 turnovers this year. Woo, 14. Now, Herm Edwards never has never had a losing season. Never in the NFL. This is the first time that he has had a losing season. <clears throat> now, he doesn't know how to handle it, and you can tell. But I'll tell you what he does say, and he's very adamant about it. He will not compromise. He will not change his practices. They are just as intense as they have always been, and there are no shortcuts. I love this guy. I love the spirit in this guy, and I'm telling you, he'd make a great coach for the Oakland Raiders. He's still working his team as hard as ever, and he will not let these men, and I quote, these men quit. That is pretty awesome. Pretty doggone awesome. So, what I see for the game. Marcus Tuisasopo is going to be just like a rookie. He hasn't been playing very much. He's going to be out there. His first series, his first quarter is going to be very questionable. He's going to be feeling his feet. He's going to be feeling his arm. He's going to be feeling the offense. So, you know, I don't expect any miracles out there, and I don't think anybody in the Raider Nation should expect any miracles. This is <clears throat> why they put Tui in, so that he could get some experience. Now, don't be surprised, because Collins is still number two, if they throw Collins back in there, if we have an opportunity to win the game. Um, I don't expect Norv Turner to leave Tui Asasopo in there if he's fallen on his face. Um, without putting <clears throat> our best opportunity to win, sadly to say, is Collins anyways. But um, we'll see. I hope Tui is successful. I have a lot of confidence in him, seeing him play in college uh, like Robbie did. He is an awesome quarterback. He was on fire uh, for the Huskies. He was on fire. He was a great running threat. It was amazing. He, he was four yards per run average for the quarterback that's pretty good uh, he's a little bit older a little bit wiser but he hasn't been beat up so i expect i expect him to make some runs i expect him to pull the defense in <clears throat> which should give him some passing lanes and uh i expect him to do pretty well but i don't think turner is going to leave him in if he's faltering and um well who knows because i know that north turner did not make this decision. I know that Norv Turner did not decide to bench Kerry Collins by himself. This was Al Davis, and this is Al Davis's thing. They need, we needed a spark, and Al Davis knew it, and he made it happen because um, I still think he has it, and I, th I still think he's, he's doing the best to try to get a victory. <clears throat> so, anyway, back to the Jets game. They will try to rush to Yasupa. They're going to try to rush a quarterback. They're trying to get on him just like they do. And their defense is just like ours. <clears throat> I think this team, this game is going to come down to the third and fourth quarter. I think the team that has the most life left in the defense in the third and fourth quarter will be victorious. I don't expect a whole lot of points because they're like us. Uh, 20 points per game average. Or maybe even a little bit less. <clears throat> so, taking that into consideration, uh, we should win the game. But then again, I said that we were going to win the game when we played Miami. And uh, we came out, and that was, well, that's what it was. And I don't need to go into that. So, even though they're 2-10, and ten, it's like a wounded animal. You know, Herm Edwards wants the victory. And he's going to try to put a game plan together to beat us. Whether they can or not is another story. <clears throat> Our offensive line doesn't look real good itself. You know, we got some injuries. Jake Grove got hurt in the last game against the Chargers from a cheap shot, no doubt. We got fullback John Paul Fushi. He's doubtful with a foot. Ted Washington's questionable. He has a thigh injury. And Brad Badger has a knee injury, and he missed practice. So you put all that together, that doesn't really bode well with Brad Batcher and Jake Grove. And also, um, Gallery's hurt. Gallery's got a 
a, a pain somewhere, but he's been injured too. So our offensive line is banged up for this time of the year, and we need him to play very well. So I'm hoping they all come to play. Derek Burgess did not practice this week because he's sick. He had a cold. So that's what's going on with our team right now. So it's it's a way to look at Tui. Hopefully our offensive line will play strong for him <clears throat> and protect him. But if not, he'll roll out. This guy can roll out quick and be out there in the flats and either burn you with a run or burn you with a pass. And with Lamont, the way he's doing things and catching the ball, this could be a fun game. And I'm looking forward to seeing Kutui succeed. I really am. I'd like to see him succeed for many reasons. <coughs> Excuse me, I got the itchy throat here. Now let's look at this. ESPN, I've been listening to ESPN and CBS, and the sports, <laughs> the sports commentators on ESPN, just those guys alone, flipped me out. They were backing Collins up 110%. And how wrong the Raiders are to remove this guy because of his completion average and his yardage completion and his really... His, his just his, his average interceptions, uh, his average of interceptions, and just those numbers alone, they were defending him and saying it was a very bad move and it wasn't his fault. Well, guess what? Those jokers don't look at the Raiders games. They don't watch every Raiders games. They don't even watch the finite points of the game as you and I do as a Raider fan. They don't see Kerry Collins overthrowing and underthrowing. They don't see the possibilities of, of great plays that go undone because of his passing. They don't see him stand there in the pocket and hold the ball until he gets enveloped by a defense. They don't see him making poor decisions on who to pass to when someone is perfectly wide open further down the field. His checkdowns suck. His passes are questionable, and he just can't get the job done with his feet. The biggest move I've ever seen him make was that one 18-yard touchdown run back when. I don't even remember what game that was in. Because it's too little, too late for Kerry. And the, the question about replacing him, it's unquestionable to me. And he, they're not the only people saying it. I just don't understand how sports media can look at this quarterback and say that he's the man for the job for the Raiders. We just need to get him a little more protection. I tell you this, that if he had all the protection in the world, he would overthrow balls and underthrow balls. And that's just the way he is. Because he's done it without pressure already. I've seen him do it before. And now... Okay, that's what they say. Okay, <laughs> that's part of what they are saying. What he is saying is that he is still, that is still his team. And he's going to support Tuiyasu Sopo, but he thinks it's a poor decision, of course. And that he's kind of pouty about it. Now, but he's saying right now we've got a game to win, rah, rah, rah. And he's going to help Tui get his game together. Because it's been a while since Tui's played. Now, I, I, I will say this. Collins is saying all the right things, but he has not demonstrated all the right things. <clears throat> he's not fired up the offensive line with, with his intensity like Gannon used to do. He has not called to order his offense and and made a point in the huddle to get fierce and, and be competitive like Tui does. I remember seeing Tui doing this. All right, you can just see him saying, all right, guys, I need you to protect me. I need you. I could just see him. You could see the team focusing in on this guy, a true leader. Tuyasu Sopo is. 
total different style. If Collins considers himself a leader in football, I I just can't see it. If you can see it, email me at www.raidernationpodcast.com. Check it out. Put it on the comment section. Please, somebody. No one said so far. I'd love to see it. Now, here's the deal with Collins. He's probably going to be benched for the next four games, beginning Sunday with the Jets. <clears throat> it's a huge, but it's probably a logical leap to declare Collins' career with the Raiders finished. And let me tell you why. Not because he's not a nice guy, not because he, you know, not because we don't need him. I mean, we don't need him. Uh, we need a leader, and he's not the guy. But here's the number one reason that we can get rid of him and probably should. Because his cap number is $12.897 million for 06, and we're $30 million over the cap. Hello? doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure that one out. We can get rid of him and almost eliminate half of our cap problem in one foul swoop. Seeing as though Tui Asasopo will make $477,000 next season. That's not that's a big difference, wouldn't you say? I'd say so, too. I'm sure that Tui will restructure his contract if he's number one, but he's not going to get no $12.9 million, not if, unless he becomes a superstar in the next four games and puts up 35 points a game in an unbelievable effort, which I'd love to see, incidentally. I'd love to see him get paid for that. <clears throat> so I don't see Collins having a future in Oakland. He's certainly not worth the money. And even if he restructured his deal, I don't want to see him hanging around. We need to get some new blood in here. If Tui Asasopo is not the quarterback, we're going to have to get somebody who is. I'd love to see Walter play. I'm not going to tell you otherwise. He's a young kid, very young, but I believe in all my heart that this kid has it. I've seen him play. I've seen him play preseason. <clears throat> he's young, but I think he's got what it takes. I think what he has is better than Roethlisberger or any of the other guys that came out in their first season and done well. I know he's better than Eli Manning, and I'm not just kidding. So... I'd love to see Walter at least get an opportunity to play. Maybe he will. I doubt it, though. I hope he gets to play for us. It'd be nice to see. So, <clears throat> I say, that's what I say. Collins must go, and he must go next season. I don't think he'll be uh, wearing a Raiders outfit after this year, strictly because we have to pay him. I mean, this is funny. If it feels like the Raider Nation has gone down the same road before, sort of, it might be. Because in 1991, Raiders coach Art Shell sat increasingly on the unpopular seat. And Jay Schroeder, of course, or Schrader, however you want to say it, uh, the, he benched him in favor of rookie Todd Marinovich. For the regular season finale. But of course. The Raiders were on their way to the playoffs. And uh, this year. They're 4-8. and eight. And they've been eliminated from the playoffs. So there's a difference. But it's it's interesting how that kind of. Coach's hot seat happened. Woodson's walking on his leg. That's another thing that's going on with the Raiders. I don't see him coming back though. Because he's another cap hit. That <clears throat> I don't think we're going to take. So, Raider Nation, it could be a victory. I'd love to see it. The main thing I want to see, though, I want to see Tui be successful. I'd like to see him run this offense, and I'd like to see the offense give him an opportunity. This team really has to rise to the occasion. We need a victory. We've lost four out of the last five games, and uh, I, don't, I don't want to hear any chanting like they did in Baltimore. They were chanting, Draft pick, draft pick. They wanted the team to lose so they could get a better draft pick. What kind of fans are they? I don't care about the draft pick. Like I said before, the draft pick is a crapshoot. You don't know who you're going to get. 
Win the ball game for crying out loud. I don't care about anything. Win the ball game. So uh, no draft pick chance out of the Raider Nation. I don't see it. Commitment to excellent and just win, baby. That's what it's all about for the Raiders. And that's what it all it's all about for the Raider Nation. Anyways, a little short podcast for you. This is Raider Greg. Thank you for tuning in to the Raider Nation podcast. Thank you for voting Podcast Alley. I appreciate it immensely. And don't forget the Farappa Frapper site. Check it out. Put your pin in there. I want to see some Raider fans. I want to see some faces of the Raider Nation podcast fan. Okay? All right, Raider Greg, I am out. Thank you.